Hi, good afternoon. Okay. I'm Xenia, co-founder and CEO of SLY. We provide continuous emissions monitoring of super pollutants across vast outdoor spaces, protecting vital assets such as power grids, gas pipelines, and even forests. Our primary client vertical is energy infrastructure companies, where our partner ENI, for example, world's top five energy company, has been absolutely thrilled with the results of our proof of concept, and we have recently signed a joint venture or a joint development agreement to further strengthen uh, product offering across use cases and to enhance our ability to commercialize our solution. As a testament to our partnership, a month ago we received the Entrepreneurship Award for Energy Sustainability Innovation that was presented to us by the President of Italy alongside the CEO and Chairman of the Board of ENI. And of course, ENI is not alone. New stringent regulations across Europe, the US and beyond are forcing organizations to realize that continuous emissions monitoring across the entire footprint of their vastly distributed assets is no longer a nice to have. Failure to detect risk events such as fires or gas leaks results in multi-billion dollar losses. Just think back to what happened in the 70s and 80s when household smoke alarms became a safety standard in every home. Until today, autonomous sensing of airborne threats across vast outdoor spaces has been largely unfeasible. Our platform transforms this. With our solutions, emissions can be reduced by up to 20% and environmental disasters prevented. I learned firsthand about the urgent need for rapid and reliable detection. When my family relocated to southern Italy, we had a large fire on our agricultural land. It was a windy day and the ignition wasn't caught in time to contain it. Existing solutions tend to be vision-based technologies that ultimately leave blind spots, particularly across remote sites. We approached solving this problem differently and created a gas-based sensing platform that classifies tiny changes in the chemistry of the air, looking for anomalies associated with molecules in fire smoke or superpollutant gases such as methane. And this is incredibly exciting because for the first time in history, we've been able to deploy advanced time series AI models directly on board small solar power devices and connect them directly to satellite for remote area communication. We started selling this year and have booked over a million in revenues from companies such as ENI, world's largest cable maker Prismian that is making our technology available to six utilities on the West Coast US, and have deployed across forests and private lands thanks to a growing uh, channel partner network. Market size for our solution is immense, spanning agriculture, forests, energy infrastructure, even landfills and mines. While our competitors are focused on forest health monitoring, um, we or provide incomplete solutions to energy companies, we are set on rapidly expanding our coverage to set strong entry barriers. Our revenue model is subscription driven. We have high gross margins. And thanks to the 10 plus year life and field of our sensors, uh, our revenues are sticky. We're targeting to reach 600K MRR by the end of next year. In summary, since we started our company a year and a half ago, our platform has evolved from wildfire detection to now monitoring nearly two dozen molecules associated with super pollutants. We've expanded our TAM, we continue to uncover new use cases and see huge opportunities in partnering with insurance companies. We're raising capital to set up a dedicated sales and marketing team and ultimately execute on our vision, which is to become a hardware agnostic, multi-monitoring service for real assets. Just think about a company called Samsara, which is now a $27 billion publicly listed company that was able to achieve that in less than a decade across physical operations. I thank you for your attention and invite you to join us as we execute on this solution to a burning need. Thank you. Thank you, Xenia. Just in time, perfect. Yeah. Next up, some questions. Yeah. Hey, super, super amazing. And I mean, this has been the talk of the town at COP as well with the methane emissions and so forth. I guess my biggest question is that you know, oil and gas have been super reluctant to do anything about that for, for decades. So what's your selling point and how do you actually get them to, to care about those methane emissions? Um, 
so two, two ways to answer your question. So one, when we're speaking with um, energy companies such as ENI in Italy, such as Kinder Morgan in the United States, with their help, we keep on uncovering new use cases for our sensing platform. So for example, our first call with Kinder Morgan, the individual on the other side ran us through seven different ways to deploy our technology, you know, spanning from monitoring the entire pipeline to making more sort of um, uh, targeted deployments across compressor stations, for example. So again, there's more than one way that we can deploy our technology with an energy company. So that's one way to answer your question. Second way is effectively uh, regulation driven. You know, particularly in the US where I feel um, perhaps the United States is a little bit more ahead of Europe in this, in this sense. Uh, the Department of Energy under the Biden, Biden administration, so things may be changing, but they have released this new rule for energy companies to start um, being fined for excess waste emissions. So again, point being is that regulation has either already come or is coming. Um, that plus, uh, I would say, broader stakeholder pressure from investment community, you know, energy companies will need to start, continue deploying technologies. Um, our type of solution uh, is one of several ways that put together will allow them to, to uh, monitor those emissions and report on them. Thanks, great presentation. I have two questions. One is, where does your name come from? Sly, uh, very interesting. Not my personal name? <laughs> oh, uh, no, no. Yes. Uh, okay. it's not in this case. And the yeah. second one is, it sounds a little bit operationally heavy to go around with the sensors and therefore like the, the success rate of doing what it's meant to do is, is something I'm questioning. How does the actual operational load look on um, the yeah. So um, I'll answer in the backwards order. So we don't um, take on uh, deployment on ourselves. So again, our largest uh, opportunity is with energy infrastructure companies. So think about power lines or gas pipelines. These organizations already either have staff in-house or have outsourced service providers that are already walking along the entire footprint of an electric grid or gas pipeline, for example, doing periodic maintenance, periodic inspe inspections, or things as simple as vegetation management. Management. You know, literally following the electric line, cutting trees um, to make sure that there is uh, there is no contact. So the idea for us is, as we work with uh, with our uh, end users, is to leverage some of these existing uh, resources that they already have. And deployment of our sensors is very straightforward. Each one takes a couple of minutes to to mount, and and it's done. And once it's deployed, it's good to stay in field for 10 plus years without maintenance. So the point being is that you put it there, and then it continuously runs, does its thing until an anomaly is detected. Uh, and then uh, how Sly came about. So Sly is short for Sylvester. So think Sylvester Stallone, Sly Stallone. Uh, we founded the company thinking that wildfire monitoring was going to be our core purpose. So Sly or still. Uh, Sorry, Sylvester means off trees. So again, wildfire monitoring. Um, you know, I'll throw in another name there. Our service is actually called Triage. So that's the product or service brand. So again, another play on the word tree. <laughs> Time for one quick question. For the customers you work with, what's been the rollout speed? Was it like one pipeline they tried this with, or is is it like an immediate rollout across the entire portfolio of infrastructure assets that they own? Um, no, it's, it's gradual, uh, right? So I would say in, in the case of energy infrastructure, uh, specifically the best way to think about is deploying uh, sensors, uh, if we're talking about electric line or gas pipeline, we're talking about deploying uh, sensors on about 1,000 kilometers um, per month. Right, so if you do the math, that sort of means deployment at about 5,000 sensor units um, per month, which is how effectively we're, we're scaling. And, um, and if you do math backwards, this is what will allow us to hit the 600K MRR uh, within one year working with just single client. So yes, it is gradual. All right, thanks a lot, Xenia. Thank you. Let's give Thank you. a huge applause.